Former Afghanistan senior national representative to the US Central Command and a PhD scholar at the School of Interdisciplinary Global Studies at the University of South Florida. Welcome to the program, Ahmed. A swift response from Saudi Arabia there. Zawahiri himself was Egyptian, but he was considered to be Saudi national Osama bin Laden's right-hand man. Why would Riyadh be keen to welcome his death so quickly? Uh, thank you. Good to be on your uh, program. Uh, I, without any doubt that this is a major blow to the Al-Qaeda organization uh, because he was the mastermind and brain, uh, uh, the, the mastermind of the uh, leadership after uh, Bin Laden was killed in 2011. But uh, the reality is that uh, Al-Qaeda will replace him. Al-Qaeda will replace him very soon with a uh, probably young, talented leader. He was in his 70s, elderly, uh, brought in by the Haqqanis uh, to Kabul and was uh, living in, in, a, uh, in, in a, the downtown area of, of Kabul. And this also raises uh, the continued uh, question of uh, Al-Qaeda's presence in Afghanistan. Uh, yes, the U.S. has conducted, you know, uh, successful unilateral uh, drone strikes that killed uh, the leader of Al-Qaeda. Uh, but uh, overall, Al-Qaeda has significant presence uh, across Afghanistan. This is only Kabul, but across Afghanistan, they have significant presence uh, from uh, lower uh, levels to mid-level and high uh, leadership, uh, as we saw that was uh, killed in this attack. Well, under a 2020 peace deal with the United States, the Taliban agreed not to allow al-Qaeda to operate in areas under their control. But the two groups are longtime allies. Do you believe that the Taliban were aware of Zawahiri's presence in Kabul? Absolutely, the Taliban were aware of his whereabouts. The Taliban knew uh, the most probably, as I mentioned, the Haqqanis brought him because the Haqqanis have been collaborating with Al-Qaeda for the last uh, 15, uh, almost 20 years. Uh, he was hiding in Pakistan. Previously, he was uh, residing in Pakistan, but since the Taliban took uh, over uh, Afghanistan and specifically captured Kabul last year in August, he was brought back to uh, to Kabul. Uh, so there is no doubt that the, Kab the senior leadership of the Taliban were aware of his uh, location and uh, they, of, of course, uh, were trying to hide him. And uh, now the, the real question, as you mentioned, is that how the United States was fooled in the three years of negotiations that the Taliban did not, uh, uh, the, did not um, uh, break their ties with Al-Qaeda. It was assuming Khalil Zad ignominous deal with the Taliban was uh, on the notion that Al-Qaeda, uh, that the Taliban will renounce their ties with Al-Qaeda. Now we see that they have extensive ties their highest ranking leader is killed in Afghanistan. As I mentioned, they have, you know, significant presence in Afghanistan and that, um, and, and th that the United States was fooled as a result of an ignominious, uh, ignominious deal in Doha for the last three years before uh, the Taliban took over Afghanistan. Okay, Ahmad Murid Parto, we will have to leave it there, but really appreciate your analysis. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.